All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create something like this, which looks like soft body physics, but it's actually made with cloth. And I've tried to make that look like a water balloon that's completely full of water. It, the physics is a little bit slow, or the time stamp or whatever, it's moving a little slow, but you get the idea. All right, now let's go ahead and get started. In this, I will be using Blender 3.1 Alpha. Now, I believe as far back as 2.83, all the settings that I'm going to use is available all the way back to 2.83. So you're fine. Most people have 2.9 something right now. All right. Now, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this uh, cube because we don't need the cube. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the light and hide the camera because we don't need that either. Now we do, we do need to turn on an add-on if you don't already have it turned on. And, and it's the Archipack add-on. So come up here to Edit, Preferences, because it comes with Blender but it's turned off by default. So just come up here and type in uh, Archi. A R C H I, and then this will pop up and bring up these two. And the one we need is the Archimesh right here. Just check it, and we're good to go. Now let's, and we're you that add-on. We're using that add-on to create some stairs. Add mesh, and then come down here to Archimesh, and then choose stairs. All right, now we need to modify these stairs a little bit, and to modify them, we click on this little box right here. Don't move these sta stairs or do anything to them because as soon as we do anything to these stairs, you know, in the viewport, then this right here disappears on us. All right. Now we want to go ahead and set this to, let's say, about 10 stairs. All right. And let's choose close sides. Simple enough. And there's several other little things you can do to it, but I'm just going to use it. The default settings just to make it simpler. Right, I'm going to downsize that to get it out of the way and I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard and then press 5 but as we can see the stairs are looking directly at us so we don't want that so I want to press 7 to go on the top side view and I'm going to rotate this this direction so that they're going this direction so I'm going to press rotate Z 90 enter now if I press 1 to look at it in front side view, it makes more sense to us. All right. Now what we need to do is adjust the size of this because this is kind of small. I'm going to make, I'm just going to scale this up, let's say three times. S for scale, 3, enter. Now I'm going to make this just a little bit wider on the Y axis, that way we don't have to worry about our water balloon rolling off the side by accident. S for scale, Y, 3, enter. Some big stairs. All right, let's press 1 again to go back into front side view. And since this is a um, physics object and we did change the size, we need to press Control A to apply the scale. But before we do that, I want to show you something. I'll press N on the keyboard to bring out the side menu and right here where it says scale if these do not all say one and you're dealing with a physics object that means you need to apply the scale if I was to press control A and it brings up this menu and then choose scale now all of these show one so the scale has been applied because sometimes when it comes to physics objects in blender if you do not apply the scale it will do funny things not always, but sometimes. So I've just kind of gotten to the habit of doing it every time. All right, now let's go ahead and give this some physics properties. All right, so we'll come over here to the physics tab with the stairs selected, obviously, and come up here to collision. And this is our soft body and cloth physics settings. These right here are for the particle system. So these are the ones we're interested in at the bottom. All right, we need to turn up the friction quite a bit. I'm going to set it to about 50. All right, if we don't set it to 50, then the 
cloth or the water balloon, whatever you want to call it, will just slide across the surface and won't really row down. All right, now let's go ahead and create a water balloon. Most people is probably going to start off with um, a sphere, but I don't like using uh, spheres for this. In my opinion, the um, icosphere works better. So I'm going to go to mesh and then choose icosphere. Now, again, this little menu pops up. Click on that and then change this from 2 to 3. Now, you can go higher if you want. And, yeah, actually, we probably would be better off to go higher. But I'm going to keep this at 3 for now because I want to, I want to show you how things change whenever we change this to a higher number later. Although we won't be doing, changing it to a higher uh, subsurface or subdivision surface through this later. We'll be doing it through a modifier. But we'll leave it on 3 for now. All right. Now I'm going to press G for grab and bring it up here. Now this ball is a little big compared to these stairs, which is fine. But I'm going to go ahead and scale this down just a little bit. S for scale and then 0.75. That's still big, but it's smaller. It's close enough. You make it whatever size you want. But keep in mind, as the size of this changes, the weight of this changes, the pressure inside of it changes, the other settings need to be adjusted uh, accordingly to make it work the way you want it to. Alright, since this is a physics object, and right here, it uh, the scale does not show one for all of them, just press Control A to apply the scale. Alright, now with this selected, let's come over here to the cloth settings and we'll keep everything like that for now I'm going to add a floor add mesh plane and it puts the plane right down here at the bottom where we need it and I'm just gonna press S for scale and then 20 enter and then since once again the floor is going to be a physics object does not show one here so press control A and apply the scale alright now this floor it's going to also be a collision object and it's going to be obviously for soft body and cloth and then turn this up to about 50 for the friction okay now back to our cloth at this point would be a good time to go ahead and save your project file save and I'm just going to give it a generic name and that's pretty much it for right now as far as the name goes all right now if we just turn this into a cloth and we press play what do you think is going to happen it's just going to fall and collapse kind of and do nothing exciting it's just kind of rigid but kind of deforms all right so we need to put something inside of it essentially whether it's a, a force pushing the walls out, whether it's like a spring, or whether it's an air pressure. So in this case, there's two different options. You can use internal springs, or you can use pressure. Personally, I like using pressure. It, I think it's more predictable, more controllable. But let's just, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to click this and show you what it looks like and at this point it should row or kind of bounce but there's not much deformation it's like it barely deforms and then bounces back up which is fine and we could make this heavier like if we set this to one kilograms instead of 0.3 and you see it deforms a little bit more but if you look at the actual shape of it it kind of gets kind of not round looking I guess you could say it doesn't deform evenly or smoothly so that's one reason why I don't like using the internal springs now I'm gonna set this back to point three alright now I'm gonna turn off internal springs 
and I'm going to turn on pressure. Now if you just turn on pressure and nothing else, this is what happens. Pretty much the same thing as before. All right. So let's turn up the pressure. Let's set it to 1. I don't know what if this is 1 PSI or 2 PSI. I have no idea. But I'm just going to set that to 1 and we'll see what it looks like. Now it kind of holds its shape a little bit better, but it's still kind of, yeah, whatever. Now if we turn this up to, let's say, 3. Now again, this is going, the pressure that you need is going to change depending on the mass, depending on how many subdivisions it has, and depending on how large it is. But we'll see what this looks like with 3. Not bad, but it's still, it's not very squishy like a water balloon, right? It's more like a rubber ball. Now let's turn the weight up. Let's turn the weight up to 1 and we'll see what this looks like. A little bit more squishy, but it's still got quite a bit of pressure on it to keep it from really squeezing it. So we'll turn the weight up again. This time we'll turn it up to three. And I'll press play one more time. Kind of squishy even more, where it kind of just tumbles down the steps. All right, let's do it one more time. Turn it up to five. And then press play. And the physics is starting to look pretty good, but the it's moving a little fast because there's a little bit too much pressure or not quite enough weight. So I'm going to turn down the pressure to two. And this should allow it to compress more or to be more squishy. But you, you can see we don't have enough subdivisions to make it look smooth. So what we, we want to do at this point, go back to the beginning with the Icosphere selected, come over here to the Modifiers tab, add Modifier, and then choose Subdivision Surface. Now change both of these to 1, and then right here click apply now we need whenever we're adding a subdivision surface modifier to this we need to apply it unless it's already baked but being that it's not baked we need to, need to go ahead and apply it if we don't the physics will get wonky and it won't work quite right so right now let's go back to the physics settings and again we didn't change any of these settings we just made the subdivision surface a little bit or the subdivisions a little bit more dense so it has more geometry to bend so it can bend more smoothly now it's probably not going to work right see it kind of collapses on in on itself but you can see how much better it bends now all right so that's telling us we need to either make it lighter or add more pressure I think we have the weight about right. So let's add more pressure. Let's double the pressure, change it to four. Now, I think it's still going to collapse, but probably not quite as badly. Not much difference, actually. Now let's change it, double it again to eight. And then press play. See it kind of tumbling down now, but see we're getting closer but it's kind of not working right and one of the reasons why it's not working right is because down here on the collisions we need to turn on self collision because some of the cloth is actually intersecting itself all right let's press play one more time now that looks a little bit better in terms of physics but it's still I mean that that's actually kind of cool looking, I think, how it's kind of just oozing down. I actually kind of like that, but it's not quite like a water balloon. It's more like a slime ball or something. All right, but let's add a, just a little bit more pressure. Let's change this to 10, basically adding 25% more pressure. 
and press play. It's still not quite enough for a water balloon, but it's getting closer, right? And let's bump this up to, let's say, 12. And I kind of go through this where I make small adjustments because sometimes you'll come across this uh, pressure that just looks nice. <laughs> so, all right, but that's still not quite enough. So we'll make this up, set this to 15. That should be enough, I'm guessing, at this point. Although when it does fall initially, the comp it kind of compresses way too small which is kind of an issue. See, if you look at it when it first hits, and I'm not 100% sure how I would go about fixing that. I mean, you could probably keyframe the pressure, but realistically, that's, that's not that bad. But as you can see, it's literally rolling instead of just sliding. sliding. So let me make a change. Let me change this to let's say five I think that was the, the default setting and if I press play now I believe it will just slide well maybe not nah but generally speaking in this case it's just one of those cases where it didn't need it but generally speaking if the uh, ball or water balloon or whatever we want to call it is more dense meaning that it doesn't collapse as much then you will need uh, a higher friction otherwise it's just going to slide across the surface but one of the reasons why it's being so grippy on the stairs is because it is basically bending to the shape of the stairs all right now let's I kind of let me play through this one more time I, I, yeah I want a little bit more pressure change this to 20 see what it does yeah there we go all right you can see it's taking roughly the entire 250 frames to come to a stop which is what we need so at this point since if you haven't played all the way through, which if you have a slower computer or a laptop, likely you have not yet. But we come over here to the cache setting and then click on disk cache. And I'm just going to click delete all bakes. That way we start off fresh, make sure there's no stray cache, and then just click bake. All right, now it's going to go through and create all the bake data and then it's going to it turn dark purple so it's basically locked in unless we click delete now if I press play pretty much there you go now at this point we can if we zoom in on this we can go ahead and add a modifier add modifier choose subdivision surface and but do not click apply just keep it like it is all right and we go ahead and give this a material I'm just going to uh, give it well I'm actually going to give it a glass material and kind of make it like a point one on the roughness and give this kind of a reddish color all right and let's put this in render view but first I'm gonna go to cycles cuz I like cycles much better than EV and I'm going to turn off the uh, that the noise threshold on the uh, viewport and on the noise threshold for the uh, render I'm going to set that to zero zero basically means if Blender thinks it's rendered it to a point where there's not that much noise, then it will stop rendering. 
but it, it basically lets Blender make that decision. And for the most part, leaving it set to zero has always worked for me. All right. Max number of samples. No, we don't need no 4,096 samples. I don't know why that's in here. But I'm going to set that to 128 because that's generally enough. And on the denoise, for something like this, I just change the passes to none. That way it just does a general denoise for it. And that's pretty much what I'm looking at now. Let me go ahead and uh, this is one of those cases where an HDRI would come in handy if you don't have any HDRIs on your computer which are like environmental textures you can go to HDRI Haven and download a bunch of them they're free. Alright I'm going to add an, an, an environment texture and this is going to be an HDRI uh, let me go here, assets, assets, I got it kind of buried for some weird reason. And I keep meaning to change it. And let me put this in thumbnail view. And I'm just going to find one that looks halfway decent. This, is, this one will work just fine. It's weird I have two of them exactly the same. One at EXR and one at HDR. I wonder how that happened. Anyway, but you can get all of these ones that I have from HDRI Haven. And again, they're free. And let me go ahead and click Render View. Alright. You can kind of see what it looks like. Let me click on the steps and I'll just make this a very simple material oh it's actually got a material set up it must be part of the Archipac uh, deal but it doesn't look like it's working right so I'm just going to change this to a principled and give us kind of a dark color and then same way with the floor give it kind of a no, I actually get, give the floor kind of a brown color. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm just mostly teaching the teaching about the physics anyway, not exactly the um, <laughs> all the materials. Because I mean, you got to have leave some of it up to your own artistic uh, interpretation anyway. But as you can see, if we, we when we're looking at this sphere, we can actually see some of the geometry shape. So to get rid of that, just select it go to object and then shade smooth and now it looks a little bit better now let's set up the camera I'm going to press 0 to go into camera view actually I'm going to put this in solid view for now and uh, let me see I'm going to zoom in just a little bit make the camera fill up the entire screen come over here to view and then lock camera to view and then just kind of set it like that just so we can get a good render of it and I'm just going to come up here and click render image Now that's probably actually a little too glossy or glassy looking, looking for a, uh, like a water balloon. But again, one of these things. This is one of those things where you want to set up your materials to look the way you want. But anyway, the physics is all I'm really trying to teach. I'm terrible at uh, materials anyway. But we'll uh, try to make this look a little bit more like a water balloon in terms of the materials I'm actually going to go back to a principled shader I'm going to put this in rendered view and I'm going to change this to a reddish color 
I probably a darker red and turn come down here to the transmission turn that up a little bit turn the uh, alpha down just a hair Eh, it still doesn't look quite right, but that's okay. I'm not trying to teach you the materials. But anyway, if you have any questions about the physics portion of this, because that's really all I'm good at, uh, don't hesitate to leave a question. I try my best to get to everyone, uh, but sometimes I can't. If I miss your question, it's not that I'm trying to ignore you. It's just I miss some of them sometimes. But anyway... Yeah. Again, do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments. Later, people. Oh, one more thing. I'll go ahead and render this, some semblance of it, just so you have, have an idea what it looks like. Later.